Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about how the Star of David is one of the most perfect symbols for the meditating yogi, for the process that the yogi is going through. And so to talk about that, we're going to talk a little bit about mythology and symbology, and we're going to get into a wonderful book that lays all of that out. I highly recommend that you get this book and you read it from the start to most of the finish. It's an amazing read, and it's going to do something very special to your brain as you go through that. And so I want to talk to you about all of that. So let's get into it. So the first symbol is the triangle, the base triangle, which is the symbol of a mountain. And nowhere is this more clear than in Mount Olympus. So you hear about the Greek gods and goddesses and they, the, the humans live down below, right? At the base of the mountain and the gods live at the top. And isn't that beautiful? That's absolutely a metaphor for the process of meditation. We go and we sit and we become very still and we sit like the mountain, don't we? We become the stone. And in that silence, eventually the energy and the consciousness, more importantly, the consciousness rises up into the brain and we commune with the gods and goddesses and that's represented in Mount Olympus. So whenever you hear a story about a yogi going into the mountains or you hear a story about the gods living on the mountain, all of this is a symbolic reference to meditation and the process of sitting very still and meditating in silence. And all of this is laid out so amazingly in the book called The Body of Myth. It's just absolutely profound. It's a Raja Yoga text. It's not a how-to book. It's a how to think about mythology and symbology and how all of these symbols relate back to the process of meditation. Now, the author is a Raja Yoga expert and he's not implying that the Greek understandings came all the way from India. They, they well could have, absolutely, through Egypt, from India, it's absolutely plausible and most likely. But more than that, we are all human and we all experience deep truths and they will lead us eventually to the same place. And so the Greek mythology and the mystery schools that they were promoting were practicing the same essential principles that Raja Yogis use all the time. So it's an amazing study, it's an amazing book, and that mountain, just like Mount Olympus, is the first symbol in the Star of David. And that is the yogi sitting every day in meditation, sitting very still, going into the low idle state, awakening the parasympathetic system, awakening the dorsal vagal parasympathetic system specifically, going into the freeze response and freezing in stillness like the mountain. So that's the first symbol. And then we see the triangle coming down into the mountain. And that's the second symbol. It's a call and response. All of meditation, all of the prayer processes, everything is a call and response. We sit very still so we can follow the law of be still and what happens? Then we know. So we be still so that we can know. It's a call and response. And so that second triangle 
coming down from the heavens. Is the heavens coming down? That is the response of the divine integrating with the yogi. And so you have in every spirituality, you have this wonderful language of letting go, of surrender, of opening yourself in a loving manner. And all of this is describing this call and response. It's not that you forced the divine to come down into you. It's that you opened yourself to it. And because of that surrender, it came. And I love to put it in this language. If you will induce the right brain, if you will induce expansion, then the right brain will come down on you. If you induce bliss, then the left amygdala of bliss will come down on you. It's not that you forced it, it's that you called it, you induced it. And so that channel gets stronger and stronger and it shows up more and more in your life and in your meditation. So that's the divine coming down. So the yogi is sitting there. He's sitting very still. He reaches his deepest point. He brings his consciousness. He rises it up through the process of Om Japa through the chakras. The consciousness rolls up into the brain and now he's sitting with the gods and goddesses and the divine is coming down. And it's you could almost see it as a tornado coming down and that tornado will actually suck him into the Samadhi. And that's a little bit of an absorption experience. So this feeling of being pulled up very strongly as if, it, as if that triangle was actually swallowing you whole, like Jonah and the whale. That's a story of this triangle coming down. Jonah and the whale is a description of the yogi being swallowed by the divine. And this is absolutely one of my favorite absorption type experiences when the divine actually swallows you. So there's a pulling up sensation that you could have, and there's actually a swallowing sensation that you could have. And both of these are the response of the divine. The, the divine is coming down and meeting up with the personality and the personality for a little while, it winks out of existence. There's no death, it's just a, simply a transformation. You identify with the personality and then you identify with the divine. And so it's a transference, it's not an end. It's just simply the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. It's a transition of identification. <laughs> and so we go through this process over and over again. We sit like the mountain, the divine comes down. This, we sit like the mountain and the divine comes down. And slowly the two not only meet and touch, but they actually come together and integrate. And that is what the Samadhi therapy and the Sahaja Samadhi, the Samadhi that happens when you're walking around. So you're not sitting as the static meditation mountain anymore, but you're walking around and suddenly you have an awakening. You see something, you have an aha experience and it's continuous as you're going through your day. And that's the integration of the meditation into your daily life. That is the divine integrating with that triangle from below and the two come together and they come together as a whole. And so you can also see these two triangles as the left and the right brain coming together and meeting. And you could put that into a figure eight, a continuous back and forth as I've described before, or you could see it as these two triangles integrating completely. And that's the true star of David, that integration with the divine, the personality from below sitting very still, the divine coming down and integrating, creating the whole, creating the complete picture. It's so divine. It's so divine and amazing. And if you will take the time to read The Body of Myth, it's one of the most astounding books I've ever read. Brother Premamoy 
was a Yugoslavian prince and he came to the ashram and he became a monastic and they told him, you need to be a speaker. You're, you have a lot to say, you're quite good at it. You need to be the speaker. And he was very worried about his accent because it was very thick. It was a very thick accent and he went to a speech coach and he said, would you train me out of my accent? And the coach said, well, what are you doing? He explained what he was doing. He was going to give talks. And they told him, absolutely not. I'm not going to train you out of your delightful accent. He told him, in the West, we don't have a lot of heritage, which is very prevalent, like you have in Europe. There's a lot of heritage everywhere you go. In the West, we don't have that. And we crave that heritage. And so when you sit up and you speak to people with your thick accent, they get a feeling, they get a flavor of that huge heritage which is behind you. And you will capture your audience much better because of your accent. And so he kept his accent, which is wonderful. But that's a story for us as well. In the West, we don't have as much of a heritage. And so sometimes we crave it. We crave that heritage. And if you go through the body of myth, you will suddenly understand that meditation is all around you in everything all of the time. Because the West is based off of the Bible and the Greek stories. And so we have in the West, the logic of Aristotle and the morals of the Torah. And those two have integrated and, and created the base of Western civilization. And so if you will learn that all of the Greek myths have to do with meditation, you'll discover that everywhere you go, your, your meditative heritage is there. Mount Olympus, that's a meditative heritage. The stories of Zeus, that's a meditative heritage. All of the Greek myths, which inform a huge basis of Western civilization and the stories of the Torah as well, all of those are absolutely in line with yogic thought, with the process of meditation. And so you actually have a gigantic heritage and you didn't know it. And, and so you might read that book, Body of Myth, and look around like me and go, oh my God, meditation is everywhere. How many times do you see a bank or you see a, a company and they have a mountain in their symbol? Well, that mountain comes from Mount Olympus, and it's a story about the gods and meditation. Your experience of the gods in meditation. Isn't that amazing? There's another reason that the yogis were actually going into the mountains. As the tectonic plates come together, they press, and it creates a magnetic pressure which pushes upwards and so the yogi goes into the mountains and the magnetic pressure is already pushing him up towards the brain automatically so it's a beautiful yogic cheat to go up into the mountains and meditate isn't that amazing i'm putting a link down below so i hope you'll check out the body of myth and read it through it's absolutely amazing it'll blow your mind and I hope that you will start seeing the symbology of meditation all around you all the time. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.